and here comes the darkness and here comes the lightning and at random intervals come the lightnings again very good hi i'm ricky today we're on the 20th episode of the endless runner series and in this episode we'll take a look on how to implement a thunderstorm effect to our game now what i mean by this is the sky will turn dark and at random intervals lightnings will hit the screen making the player confused and dizzy we'll do this by using very simple animations no extra sprites needed this series is based on a video game that I already made and published called Boat Venture. If you want to know how this finished product will look like, do check it out, link in the description. It's free for all Android devices 9 plus on the Play Store. All right, let's start. Let's grab our game manager and let's add a new script and I'll call it Thunderstorm. In here, let's make a very quick and simple singleton pattern. And let's make a public void function called Activate Thunderstorm. And I'm doing this so we can start linking our thunderstorm script to our game and then we actually think on how to make the thunderstorm. So let's grab our unlock enemies manager and in here we'll call the thunderstorm. In my case I'll add it after the fifth enemy. So basically I want the thunderstorm to be activated as the last enemies of the ones that we've made before. Of course you can choose and activate the thunderstorm right at the start of a game or whenever you want to anyway. But anyway, this is how we have linked the effect. Now let's go and make it for real. In here we want to do two things. The first is to make the sky look darker and the second is to fire at random intervals some lightning. Let's turn the sky dark first. Let's make a reference to an animator. And in our activate thunderstorm function, we just call the animator and play a specific animation. Of course, we haven't made that animation yet, so let's go and make it. In Unity, let's select our canvas and let's go into our game panel. In here, let's make a new panel and let's put it at the top. As you may have guessed, instead of making everything darker through a Unity effect, so a render pipeline, we're actually going to use just a simple panel. How we do this is very simple. We just make a new panel and then we change the color to a very dark blue and we change the alpha. Let me disable the shop panel real quick and here you can see the effect. What we want to do is at the start we set the panel to alpha 0 and then when we activate the night effect we just put it to 110 say. Another thing I want to do is change the source image. I want to switch from background to none. This way it fills all the screen all together. Then let's add the animator component and let's make a new animator. Let's add it and let's make a new animation and the name of the clip of course has to be the same of the one in the script. So fade in night. And in here we add the property of type image and color and we change the starting point to be alpha zero. Great. Then in the animator window, if you don't have it, you can uh, look for it in, the, in this window here, right here. In here we want to make an empty state. So right click, create state empty. And we set it as the default layer. And then we select the fade in night, we double click, and we set the loop time to false. Great, and finally we select the night animation panel again, and by default, we also set the color to zero. Finally, let's select our game manager and let's drag and drop the night panel reference. Perfect, and let's see how it looks now. Very good. Maybe it was a bit too fast, but of course we can change it very easily. We can just select the clip and change the speed value. I say for a more darker and sinister tone, we can set it to a slower value of say 25%. And we are good. All right, and for the second part, we're gonna do the lightning. So let's go back to our script and let's make a new curtain. And remember to add the system collections library. Now, in this curtain, we want to cast a lightning every once in a while. Because we don't really need that much of control over it, I decided that curtain would be much better rather than an update method. In here we can wrap everything together in a while loop. 
by adding a delay to the coroutine and then cooling a lightning. Let's make a specific private void function for cooling the lightning. While for the delay we need some extra values, a minimum cooldown for the lightning and a maximum cooldown. Now when we want to get a delay in our coroutine, we make a new float value on the fly that is a random value in between the two float values that we just made. And then we use the yield return keywords. And we're going to call this coroutine in the activate thunderstorm function. Good. Now to actually cast the lightning, we're going to use something very similar to the night panel that is a lightning panel, but with a different type of animation. So first, let's make a reference to a new lightning panel. And then in our cast lightning function, we're just going to call that animator and play a specific animation. I've called the animation lightning. Of course, we haven't made it yet, but we'll get to it. The reason why I've decided to put this bit of code in a different function than just calling it here it's because in here you might also add some extra effects, like for example, an audio effect and a camera shake. I don't really like a camera shake effect for the thunderstorm, but it's something that you can look through maybe in another episode. While for the audio effect, it's really easy. I've already made an episode about audio in this endless render series. To add an audio effect in here, you have two options. The first one is grabbing the audio manager in here you add the singleton pattern and then you just call the play clip by name function and you pass in through a string. The other way that you can play an audio clip in the Anders Runner series is to add a unity event and then just invoke it. Of course, this isn't part of the thunderstorm per se, but I just wanted to show you some functionality that you may want to add. For now, I'm just going to remove it. In the future, I may make an episode totally dedicated to adding sound effects to the game. We'll see about that. And maybe another episode on how to make a camera shake, although it's really easy and there are a lot of tutorials already online. All right, but we still have to finish our thunderstorm. We still have to make the lightning animation. So let's go back to Unity. Let's duplicate the night animation panel and make sure to put it right below the night animation panel. Now let's make a new animator and let's feed it to the new lightning animation panel. Let's make a new clip and let's make a new empty clip, set it as layer default and then change the lightning transition to empty. This way, by default, nothing will happen when the thunderstorm goes on. But then when we call the lightning, the lightning effect will trigger, and when it ends, it goes back to empty. Let's also double click on the lightning clip to toggle off the loop time. And now let's actually make the lightning clip. Remember to select the lightning animation panel, and in here we just need to add property of type color. I'm just going to change the color to a very bright yellow something like this. I'm gonna save this color and then in the animation when I'm at the frame uh, let's say 3 I'm gonna add a new keyframe. I'm gonna hit record and pass that color. Then in the animation clip you can see that I made a mistake in the color so I'm just gonna delete this keyframe, delete this one too and I'm gonna put them back in. Okay and you can see that now the whole animation is of that color and then at the start, I'm going to hit record and put the alpha to zero. And I'm going to do the same at the end. I'm also going to add, let's say, two frames where the color stays at the 100%. So I'm going to put another keyframe and set the alpha to the maximum. And this way we should get a nice lightning effect. I like it to be one second long, but of course you can change it however you want. And make sure that by default the lightning animation panel has a alpha of zero. Finally, let's grab our game manager. 
and let's drag and drop the new animator. Great, and let's see how it actually looks in action. And here comes the darkness, and here comes the lightning, and at random intervals come the lightnings again. Very good. We can also add sound effects if we want to. Perfect. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you've learned something new. If you have any doubts about the code or any suggestions about the next topic, do tell me in the comments. If you like this content and you want more, please like and subscribe. In the next episode, we'll make a new item. A net that will obstruct an enemy or kill him, but only if it's an animal type of enemy. So it won't work on rocks and whirlwinds, but it will work on octopi and sharks. We also make it so that the player will occasionally grab a few extra nets throughout its gameplay if he collects a bonus, so if he collects a certain amount of coins in a row. Alright, so I'll see you in the next video.